Hello and welcome to Monday, the 16th of November, 2020. It's me, Docky, on Rambling About Miniatures again. And I have completed these four um, Warforged minis from, from uh, Gale Force 9, including the Lord of Blades here. Uh, the most impressive of them. Uh, they're pretty simple, actually. Most They're mostly metallic. Uh, it's just this guy, this priest or whatever, that has a lot of stuff on him that is not metal, and that, that took a little bit more time to paint. Um, but the others are mostly metallics. Just a few pieces of other stuff. And, uh, yeah, they turned out nicely, I think. No worries there. So, uh, but I also finished a couple of more minis. Now, I've also finished these for ducks. Uh, they didn't turn out that uh, interesting. I mean, this guy is just some sort of shaman in, in a fur cloak. I, I painted his tunic a little bit purple because I had purple left over from painting Magicka Spell here. Um, She's probably the most fun character of them. Um, I'm a little confused by this bartender, why he has such a fancy hat, and why he has this really elaborate snake emblem on his apron. I don't know if this is a reference to something that I'm missing, perhaps. Um, the monk presented a bit of a difficulty because I wanted his robes to be orange, because that's the, the classical color of Buddhist monks, which Shaolin are. But I already have the orange for his beak and, and feet, so I, I was concerned it would blend in too much. So I tried to paint it a slightly different, more, more yellowish, more brownish orange. Hopefully there's a difference that you can tell. Um, yeah. But... As I've said before, these are kind of rough sculpts, so they're painted roughly, and that's fine. Let's say hello to the final batch of ducks. A large selection of some warriors, some bookish types, mostly warriors, mostly sword carriers here, but at least one that's not, and this one is carrying a club. This one, and this one is a hammer. So, yeah. And I primed these with a, I got a new bottle of uh, airbrush primer. This one, well, I got several. I used this one, the leather brown. And here's another tip, paint the caps of your bottles, kids, because looking through the plastic of the bottle doesn't show you what color it actually is. Anyway. Getting right on this. Well, hello, Mr. Grumpy Face. So, this is Mossbeard, the tree giant. As you can see, he's really huge. I don't know if this is the biggest miniature I've ever painted in, in terms of amount of material. I put him on, this is a 130 millimeter base from Reaper, their second largest. They have 160, but I don't have any of those. I, I got uh, I got a bunch of their new baseline as add-ons to to uh, this latest Kickstarter, the, the Bones 4 Kickstarter. But I don't know if they had the 160s then, or if I just ignored them because I thought I wouldn't need them. This is the first time I've needed the one this big. I don't know what I would need an even bigger base for. So, there's still a lot of work to do. I, I, I need to texture the base, maybe add some interesting stuff to it and then get to work priming and painting everything. Uh, you see, I, I've done quite a lot of gap filling here. I don't know if it's strictly speaking necessary because this is a model with a lot of big gaping cracks in it anyway. So anybody looking at it would probably just ignore if there was uh, some extra space here at the joints. But, you know, my inner perfectionist just felt that, you know, it looks a, a tiny bit better if, if you if you uh, fill in some of those gaping cracks and gaps. 
Um, yeah, the, the cleanup work, I mean, there was there were basically no mole lines on this. It was very easy and it was, it fit together extremely well. The only thing that didn't have a really great fit was this arm joint, this shoulder joint. Uh, with the, the, you can see there's a pretty big gap here that I filled. And that happened, that was going to happen whichever way I wiggled it. I could have chosen to have the big crack at the front, but I chose to have it at the back instead because I thought that would be less visible. Um, yeah. But apart from that, it was easy peasy. And uh, yeah, hopefully by next week there will be a little bit of paint on it. I do not think I'll finish this guy by next week. It's it's a it's a this is a two week more project, at least. But there will be progress. Well, looky here, it's another box of Reaper Minis. It's the order I placed this month, in November, for bonus purposes. Uh, also because I wanted <clears throat> some of these. I, I realized there's a gap in my collection. There's one type of monster I don't have especially many of. It's gargoyles! So I picked up quite a few of the gargoyle miniatures that Reaper have. Not all of them. But most of them, to be honest. Um, total of seven in various sizes. This one has really large wings. I think this was the most expensive of them because it's the most metal. You can see this, this for example, the Gargoyle Matron is much less material. So it's probably didn't cost as much. Same with the Gargoyle Warrior. The simply titled Gargoyle. This Gargoyle Leader is a little bigger than the other, others. And then we have another Gargoyle Warrior who's pretty small. So, b because as I said, I, I uh, these are, you know, very good generic monsters that I can use for a lot of things. So I'm going to paint them right away, and because I think they're going to be rather quick, because they're mostly stone, mostly just one color. A few of them have, like the Goro leader here has is carrying another rock, which I'll have to paint a different color, differentiate it, and he's got a, a sort of chainmail loincloth, and I think the the matron has also some sort of clothing, and she's carrying a staff of some sort. But very simple. Um, so I think I will also paint the bonus mini I got this month, which is a new Dark Heaven Legends model called Vance Treadwell Ranger. Now he's in the Dark Heaven Legends line, but he has this new integral base that is more, that's not just sort of spaghetti. It's not just this uneven mess. It's actually uh, a, a symmetrical oval and it has a nice texture on it so it's intended to be an actual base and not just something for the feet to stand on that you glue on to a real base and this is something um, mostly occurring in the new dungeon dwellers line they have but it's starting to seemingly to appear in the dark heaven line as well but anyway uh, this is a simple just player character ranger figure. I'll paint him up. Uh, so that's seven minis. I think I need some more. So I went into the um, that Stonehaven miniatures, half orcs, and other humanoids Kickstarter, and I picked out three remaining small minis, very tiny. They're like mites, or or I don't know if they're even goblins. They're Really, really small, and so they won't be too much of trouble either to paint up. And we have little twenty millimeter bases for them. Um, yeah, so those ten. Well, I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue to finish by in two weeks. I'll prep them for next week and then paint them 
until the week after that. Should be doable. Um, so yeah, that was my conclusion for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Click like if you did, subscribe, share, comment, and above all, be back here in a week. Same day of the week, same channel, same Dakian, who's now signing off.